Hi everyone, I thought I'd share with you my most favorite tools, sewing tools and sewing gadgets. These are the items that I use most when I'm sewing. And I'm gonna start out here with this uh, self-healing cutting mat. And it's quite large, it's a yard by 30 inches, so 36 by 30. And this is the only uh, cutting mat that I like. I've had the green one and the black one and the pink one and this is my most favorite and it's the only one I'll use. And then to go with the cutting mat, I prefer this ruler. And this is um, um, Olifa ruler and it's got a lip on it. And so when I put it on my cutting mat, it stays put. I don't know if you can see it, but it stays put and it doesn't move when I hold it. And this is great for cutting strips of fabric or any uh, straight edge. And then of course your handy dandy tape measure. And this is, I buy these when they're 99 cents at Joann's. And just remember, when you have one of these, if it's tore or chewed up, because my dog chewed mine, um, they're no good. They're not accurate anymore. So make sure that it has the ends and the ends are on securely and that it's not flawed in any way. And then my other measuring tool is um, my hem gauge. And this I use for measuring, like uh, if I need a one fourth inch seam to make sure it's accurate, or for when I'm hemming pants, that type of thing. And so I use this quite often. And then I'm going to go on to my cutting tools. These are a must have. I will always have these, I will never be without these. And I'm going to start out with the rotary cutters. Uh, these are my most uh, used tool, and this is a Martelli cutting rotary cutter. And then my next favorite is the Handy Dandy Fisker. Right now this has a pinking blade in it, but uh, if I didn't have my Martelli, this is what I would use, would be my Fiskers. And this is my Fisker sewing scissors, and this is used just for sewing. And it's nice and sharp. I never use it on paper or anything like that. And then this is the, the, the scissors that I have by my, my machine. Um, they're spring loaded and it's uh, a smaller blades. And then it can lock. And this is my pinking shears. I use these quite often. And I have another pair also, but uh, I buy these when they're like 40 to 50% off at Joann's because to get these sharpened, it's you can just buy a new pair. And then my curved scissors, and th these are great for when I have to cut close or when I'm doing a embroidery, a machine embroidery, and I have to cut away some fabric. These get really, really close without cutting the stitching. And then if you do any type of rag quilting, these are a must have. I will never ever be without these again. And these are for snipping the fringes around your rag quilt. And I'm so glad I found these. Uh, they're spring loaded and they can cut through several, several layers of fabric. And even uh, like these do not do the same job as these. So I will never ever be without these again. And I'm going to go on to some pins. These are quilters pins and they're long and they have a bright head on them. I only like the yellow ones and I only like these long ones. So these are the ones I get. And then curved safety pins. I use these a lot in quilting and I have uh, different sizes and uh, a lot of them <laughs> and that's another curved one and then I have a straight pin a straight safety pin and I have these attached these are for elastic these pull elastic through uh, like if you make um, a skirt or something like that and they come in different sizes so I, I 
don't I've had these for so many years I don't even know where I got them but I love these and then this is a seam ripper and I have about 10 of these because I like to misplace them it's just a simple seam ripper I've had fancy ones before but I don't like the fancy ones I just like these plain ones and this is a needle threader this I am not without because I think I bought these in bulk I think I have a bag of like a hundred of them but these I uh, help me uh, thread my needles uh, maybe if I was 20 years old I wouldn't need these but <laughs> But now I do, so I will never be without a needle threader. And then this is a one-fourth uh, seam allowance foot. This attaches to my sewing machine. It's got this little guide that goes on the edge of the fabric, and it gives me uh, a perfect one-fourth inch seam allowance. And this, of course, is a closed pin, and these are handy for when you want to clip something together quick or if you don't want to pin something you can use these and then these are weights these I put on patterns uh, when I want to cut around a pattern or trace around a pattern so then I don't have to pin it and then these tools this is a purple thing and it's not thing it's thang t-h-a-n-g and this comes in so handy it's got different edges and different points and you can use it for poking out corners. You can use it to help guide your fabric through your foot if, if you can't get your fingers in there. Um, it it's, comes in super handy. And then this is my tube turning tools. And I'm going to show you how these work. Uh, let's say I want to make a strap or a tube. You, you just stick uh, the appropriate size tube in there and then you use this chopstick and it turns and it turns your tube for you and look at that it turns it <laughs> so and there's different sizes and then this one actually has a, a metal uh, pusher I just didn't grab that for the video and then the bone folder this comes in super handy for if I want to press open a seam, but I don't want to iron, I can use the bone folder. And then this also helps turn your corners because sometimes you need a, a nice uh, corner so you can just stick it in there and it won't poke through your fabric. And you can turn your corners really well. And then for marking, I prefer these uh, markers. This is a pink one. And I can mark on my fabric and then I can take the mark away with water. So I prefer the pink and the blue. And then this marker is just a water marker. So if I want to erase the mark, I can. And then for black fabric, I prefer a chalk pencil. This is a white chalk pencil. And this is for darker fabrics when the blue or the pink marker won't show up. And then uh, this is an adhesive spray. It's a temporary fabric adhesive. It's called 505 and this is my extra super favorite uh, Adhesive spray. I use this for quilting. I use this for many applications and I've tried a lot of adhesive sprays But now I only get the 505 spray and fix temporary fabric adhesive and then for starching I use Mary Ellen's Best Press and it comes in different scents and it does come unscented and I actually put it in this bottle because this uh, sprays a lot and this is a misting bottle so it doesn't you don't waste as much and I actually uh, fill it to about here and then I, I do add a little bit of water just to dilute it uh, so it lasts longer and this I use when I'm quilting or when I'm making American Girl clothes, anything that I need to have a little bit stiff uh, so it sews better, the, the, this is the best. I'll never use any other starch but this. And then another adhesive I use is Heat and Bond. And this is Heat and Bond Heavy. And this is an iron-on adhesive. And I use this for appliques. I use this for card making. I use this in many, many uh, applications and it's easy to use. 
And then for like the adhesive for the heat and bond, you need an iron. And I just use a simple, this is like a $5 iron and it works just fine. So that's what I use, it's just a simple cheap iron. And then for thread, I use cone thread. I buy this at Joann's when it's 99 cents and I usually pick up two or three of the same color and I probably have more cone thread than I'll ever use in a lifetime. And then so it works on your sewing machine. This is a thread cone holder and this was actually made by a friend of mine and he made this for me. They do have plastic ones, but I did not like the plastic ones because this would bend a lot and then it wouldn't work correctly. So this is heavy and then this part is metal so it doesn't bend. And then for um, bobbins, I only buy non-name brand bobbins. I don't buy brand name bobbins. I buy these plastic bobbins and I buy them at Sharp Sewing Supplies. I buy them online. And th this bag of bobbins, I believe this was a hundred. And so I like to buy my bobbins in bulk. But that is most of my favorite things. And I hope uh, that these will help you in your sewing adventure. And, uh, and it'll help save you money because then you know what I like and maybe you'll like them too. And so you won't have to try a ton of different things out. So thanks for watching. Bye.